In this training video, I'm going to be taking you through how you can create automated design variations like we see on the screen here, as well as how you can create global assets similar to what I've created here that have a pan animation applied to the background of the image and how those can be embedded into your design or actually swapped out from your data feed. So what we'll jump into first is how those global assets have been created. So I've created my folder down here called Global Assets Coffee Background Pan Animation. I've clearly la uh, labeled all of these different designs so that they're easily accessible from all other team members who may want to use these in other projects. If we click into one of these assets here, you can see that there's a few different sizes that have been activated. And the reason I've chosen those sizes is that's the size that appears in my master design. So the first step would be building your first design. So say for example, we open this latte art, you can see we have three, four, five, six, seven sizes. And what I've done is I've brought in my image from uploading it to my assets panel and making it uh, snap to all edges. And then under the animation effects, I've chosen pan. And this is what's created this nice kind of video like feeling uh, to a static image. So I've set my start point and my endpoint to focus on this coffee cup. We can preview that animation by just clicking here. Um, so that'll give us a short preview to make sure that we're happy with that animation. And I've also set my easing options to be linear. So this will just keep a consistent speed. Um, as well as under my animation frames, I've set this to be a duration of six seconds. Now this duration of six seconds was based on my master design which has a total animation uh, duration of six seconds. So this means that my uh, background pan will play throughout the entire duration of the animation sequence. Um, and this is a, one of the main reasons why this feature can be very useful is that it means that you're not restricted to say one frame um, on the original design, uh, whereas you can set this to be playing throughout the whole uh, animation sequence. So I'm just gonna save this. I'll go into my, all of my active sizes. And if we come back out of this window, the way that I created these other five variations was clicking duplicate. Um, once I clicked this, I could then go into uh, the new design. I could go into my assets panel. I can swap out my um, image for one of the other images that I uploaded just by clicking uh, the background and then using my swap asset tool. Notice that my pen animation will pull through from the last uh, animation that we had. If you want to customize this, because for in this example, we definitely want the coffee cup in the middle of the screen, we can just adjust the start and the end point to focus better on this specific image. So it does pull through the animation, but you can of course customize that across all of your sizes to ensure that everything looks good um, and make any adjustments as needed. So once that was done, I did that for the rest of the four variations. Um, so I have saved all of those there and to create the automated design variations. Um, all that you need to do is copy the design ID and you'll notice it says ID copy to clipboard. And then here is my data feed. So under image or global asset ID, I just need to paste those five IDs that I copied from my design folder. Some other components to my data feed is uh, going to be my text. So this is a, a campaign that's running throughout the week that the coffee shop is open. So we have very simple text of start your Mondays right through to Saturdays. We have a call to action button that changes out across the design variations. We have a click through URL that directs through to the final landing page. And this is all of the design, uh, the actual design components. So this is uh, the text or the images um, that will be changing out. Over on this side, the section in gray, this is all of my file naming. So I've set this in my feed to automate uh, the process of naming each of my design variations. So you can see I have a design title, description, custom ID, language, country, and channel. So all of those will pull through when I connect my design to this feed. So if we come back over now to the master template, what we're going to do is take you through the process of how you connect these elements. So I've already completed this campaign as we showed, um, but I have duplicated this design, so we'll be using this one here. So all that I need to do, I've already uploaded my data feed. 
Um, if you need any information on how to upload the feed, uh, you can search through our support articles or also it's very quick to do just by heading into the admin panel um, and you'll notice that you get the option of uploading your data feed here. So you can do that easily. Uh, this is the campaign that we're working with right now, Endure Days Campaign 2025. Uh, so if we come back over to this design, you can select any size and we can start connecting the elements that we want to be dynamic. Uh, the first thing to notice is you may see this red line here. So one thing that I have done in terms of setting up this template in a way that would work well with my data feed is I have auto resizing text turned on as well as anchoring elements. And what this means is that I have some padding in between these two text elements so that if there's less text or more text, this will maintain uh, the positioning of four pixels, which if we just select these two elements, you can see that anchored, um, as well as if I select here and go into text settings, you can see that auto resize text box is being turned on and my padding has four pixels between these two elements. So this just ensures that whenever I change my content here, this is going to make sure that um, my design will still look great across sizes just by setting these, the auto resizing text and anchoring elements um, into that master template. So back to connecting this to the data feed. So we can select here, dynamic design text. I'll select my feed, which is the end your days campaign and then the column is going to be text one. I'm not going to be changing with the adaptive bean because this is consistent throughout all of my designs. So it's not going to be dynamic and it's not part of my data feed. The next component that is going to be dynamic is my call to action button. So we can click text settings and do the exact same process, but this time from the column, we'll choose CTA. You'll notice that changes out. Um, and for the last step is we're going to be connecting our global asset. So you'll notice that this changes slightly to say global asset settings. So very similar process, but instead it's going to be a dynamic design asset. We'll toggle that from off to on. And then we can select our product image, which is our global asset ID. So now that we've connected all of our elements, what we need to do is click save and these two, we can minimize this our window now and I'm going to click the more drop down and click generate. So now Flexitive is going to run through each of these rows and it's going to swap out my uh, text elements, my global assets, CTA text, and it's going to label all of my file names for me. So if we head back over now, we can open up any of these designs. So say for example, we want to look at the Thursday. Uh, we can see that we have this animation here um, we could try out another pan animation, so say for example the Friday design, uh, see how this is looking as well. And if you ever need to make any changes, you can of course go into any of these designs and adjust the global asset. So the way that you would do that is if we head back over to this design and we click edit, the fastest way to make any changes uh, to the global asset itself is just by selecting this element and then under global asset settings, you'll see the ability to actually edit the global asset. So you don't need to go into the folder that we showed at the start of this call. You can actually go in here directly and you'll notice this breadcrumb pops up. So you're actually still in the original design you're working in, but it allows you to make quick changes to any of um, your sizes. So say for example, we wanted to quickly adjust the animation here. So we wanted our start point to be a little bit less focused on the flowers and our end point to be kind of more centered in terms of the coffee. So if we were happy with this, we can then save or directly publish the design. And once published, we can come back into our original and here we would also want to publish that design. So now we will have those changes reflected across wherever this um, specific size is being used. And we can then of course re-preview the design uh, just by generating this external preview page. So it was this one that we made the change to, so now we're just gonna be more focused on the coffee cups. One other way that you can use global assets, which haven't been swapped out from the data feed themselves, but I have actually added another global asset to this design, is this logo. So we can see under the layers panel that this is also a global asset that's saved under the um, our Flexitive uh, Adaptive Beam demo. 
And this global asset is a responsive logo. So in scenarios where we have this kind of stacked version, which I believe is across most of our sizes, um, so we have this logo looking like this across all, but say for example, maybe we wanted to make a design change where we actually had a, a different lockup. So we had this more uh, landscape version. So what we could do here is just using the same asset, because we've created this as a global asset and it's responsive, we have those different breakpoints. And I can show you more clearly what that looks like just by going into the global asset settings, edit global asset, we'll save those changes. And so you'll see here that we have those two different layouts and that allows it to be responsive and just work with the one design across um, our different campaigns. Another benefit of creating your logo specifically as global assets is that, say for example, the Adaptive Bean changed its branding and it went from having this bean at the top and the bean was no longer required. By creating this as a global asset, it means that you could come into this design, you could replace the image or the SVG and you could swap that out for one that didn't have this logo at the top. Once you publish that, wherever this design is being embedded, and maybe that's across a thousand different designs, that will automatically update all of those designs for you. And you can imagine how much time that saves versus a more manual workflow where you're just using standard uh, image elements and you would have to go and make that change and re-upload uh, that image. You could make this centrally. So as much as we've shown a few different scenarios here, there's a lot that global assets are useful for. These are just two different uh, scenarios. But if you have any questions about global assets, um, please feel free to reach out to our support team or you can also find a lot of information under our, our support portal. So just by uh, clicking the support in the top right hand corner, you can search for support articles, for example, global assets, and you can find a lot more information here as well. Thanks for watching. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.